So let me start off with this. Most of these calculation questions will try to give you all the information you need. It'll uh, link you to the, the sources of uh, information where you um, might need to look up numbers and uh, it'll link you to any sections that uh, you need. Um, so here you must not need any section. Any sections that you may need to, um, to find the, the formulas you need to use. So um, I think this is a more of a, what we call back of the envelope calculation question. That's why it's not referring to any textbook sections because I think all the formulas you need is here. So, um, so let me work through that. It says, um, yeah, we started in the next series of tutorial questions, you will see how energy provided by nuclear fusion gives an answer consistent with the other things we know about our solar system. So, um, so each each step in this calculation will be a refinement. So this uh, first uh, simple estimate, it'll be an um, overestimate. It's uh, telling me to. Oh, I need the annotation tool. It's. Uh, it's telling me to assume that the sun is 75% hydrogen by mass and that all this mass could be converted into energy. And that's striking me as an overestimate because in the fusion reaction, all of the hydrogen doesn't turn into energy. It, some of it has to go to helium mass, but it's telling me to assume that. So we'll assume that and say that all the mass of the hydrogen goes into energy. It asks how much total energy could the sun generate and give your answer in joules and to express much number here. Oh, it use, so it looks like I will need to go to the appendix E to get the, um, to get the physical constant. Um, I'll probably, uh, let me do it. Well, I think I can write it in the corner and it'll stay. So let me do it that way. So, um, so I'll need the speed of light. Let me write it in the corner here where it'll stay. So C is equal to, um, let me just round this, this to three, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And I think I need the mass of the sun since that's my starting point for all the calculations. So uh, mass of the sun, um, let me round that to two times 10 to the 30 as well. So uh, mass of the sun is equal to two times 10 to the power of 30 kilograms. And uh, once I switch screen, all of that should be visible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> let me rewrite 10 to the 30, that's so illegible. Uh, so two times. 10 to the power of 30. Okay, so those are the basic constants I'm starting from. So um, this question basically told me to use 75% of this and put it through this, um, this equation there. So I'll break up my calculator and do uh, two. Uh, and this is the E notation of my calculator, two times 10 to the power of 30. Uh, I need a 75% of that. A way to get it is to multiply it by 0.75, 75%. That's 75% uh, times. And I need the C squared. So I'm going to type in C uh, three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. And I need to square it. So say equal, and that huge number <laughs> is uh, what it says, the uh, amount of energy that a sun could generate over its lifetime possibly. Um, so 1.35 times 10 to the power of 47 joule. And it, this is the classic example of astronomical number. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I have no intuitive feel for what kind of number that is. It's just large. So, um, by the way, um, although I'm going to use a calculator for 
um, you, you know, use this calculator for this uh, virtual class session. Let me show you one tool that you might find useful when you're doing calculations like this. It comes down to, um, you know, cal scientific calculators. It's a real easy to make mistakes on it. And when you do make mistakes, it's a harder to fix. There's no undo button most of the time. Um, so there's a tool called Ofram Alpha that um, I think I might have shown this earlier in this class. It, it makes the calculations like this much easier. It uh, makes it easier to fix the mistakes. Uh, it, and it also gives you a way to imbue more physical meaning. So let me do this calculation here. It's the same calculation, 0 0.75 times, let me put in this number in scientific notation, two times uh, 10 to the power of 30. And I'm actually this time going to put in the unit, kilograms, because Ofram Alpha is aware of units and it can actually work out the units for me. Uh, times C, speed of light. Oh, I can type this in, or I can just say speed of light. Ofram Alpha has a bunch of constants pre-programmed in, uh, squared. So when I do that, you will, see it's an interpretation of what I put in and you should always double check to make sure a computer system understood you correctly. And since that is what I meant, then I can scroll down and see which of these results are what I want. Uh, Joule is what I wanted, so that's the answer. And that's more or less what I got, 1.35 times 10 to the 47 Joules. And uh, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, it is relativistic mass energy equivalent of a solar mass. That is what I was calculating. And uh, Ufram Alpha, I think it's useful in many different ways. It's uh, useful as a way to explore other things. And so I want you to highlight that so that you know it's there. Um, but uh, for the rest of this session, I'll just to do my scientific calculator calculation. Okay, so... Um, um, uh, the, for the next level um, refinement to this estimate, so this is a gross overestimate of, um, of what the end result is. So this part is as uh, having you uh, correct it by noting that it is not 100% efficient, not all of the hydrogen mass goes into energy. So the conversion of four hydrogen atoms to one helium atom, helium four, two protons, two neutrons, results in a conversion of about 0.71% of mass um, into energy. So supposing that all of the hydrogen atoms were converted into helium. Okay, so I guess uh, I can use the result here and just take the 0.71% of that, that'll uh, be enough. So uh, let me just type in 1.35 times 10, to, oops, that's not right. <laughs> That's what I mean by mistake. 1.35 times 10 to the power of 47. And I'm using my keyboard here because it's faster. Um, to, yeah, I, that's how my scientific calculator works. So that's uh, if uh, the conversion was 100% efficient, it's a 0.71% efficient. So let me multiply it by something that's equal to 0.71%. So uh, let me do it this way. Multiply by... And so 0 0.71, that's the number in percent, but to get a, that's equivalent to that, I need to divide this by 100. Yeah, so that seems about right. So finishing the multiplication by saying equals, so that's uh, how much total energy is actually available to be pro uh, produced by, through uh, use of the known fusion process. Nine point, let me round it, 9.6 times 10 to the power of 44. 9.6 times 10 to the power of 44. Again, I'm using the E notation to say 10 to the power of 44. Okay, and here's one more correction. Uh, if you've gone through module four, you actually know that the fusion doesn't occur in all parts of the sun. It really occurs in the core. And as the, the hydrogen in the core runs out, the whole sun starts to blow apart. And it says, so the model of the sun indicates that only about 10% will eventually be turned into um, helium. Uh, and then, yeah, so, so this is overestimate by uh, a factor of 10. So I'm gonna only take 10% of this. 
So, um, so let me just do that here. Uh, take the ten percent. So multiply by zero point one. And uh, the question doesn't actually ask for that. It asks for um, so that's the total energy the sun will eventually produce over its whole life. And if we assume the sun produces this energy at this rate, which is the rate at which it's producing right now, and then um, yeah, so. So the numerically, what you have to do is take this number and divide it by this number. And this is how the units work out. I think this is one of the reasons I wanted to show this on video. Um, so the way the units work out is, so the amount of energy you have is 9.6 times 10 to the power of 43 joules. That's the unit of energy. And this, uh, this quantity here, uh, 3.8 times the 10 to the 26 watt and a uh, watt unit of power that's uh, energy per time energy per second or joules per second so let me express this as 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules per second and I want you to think about how you can combine these two numbers so that you end up with unit of seconds and have no unit of Joule at the end. And if you think through it for some time, then I hope the combination you will come up with will be take this number here and divide it by that number that has unit of joule per second. And you know, this part it takes a little bit of algebra, but the algebra you would figure out is joules will cancel, and this one over one over second will turn out to be just a second in the numerator. So I need this number, 3.8 times 10 to the 26. And I think that's basically what I'm saying in the hint. Wait, do I say it? Yeah, total energy divided by power gives the duration of time. And what I just did is the explanation of that. Um, so let me divide it by um, the, the power. Uh, so divided by 3.8 times uh, 10 to the power of 26 joules per second. So that's a huge number of seconds. <laughs> Let me, uh, okay, it's 2.52 times 10 to the power of 17 seconds. 2.52 times 10 to the power of 17 seconds. I have no intuitive feel for how large number of seconds that is, other than that's the number I'm getting. Okay, so that's at least right. So let me convert that into, um, into years and uh, that I think I give a little bit more guidance within the hint. So let me display that and follow that. So the guidance that I give in the hint for that conversion from seconds to years is this. So, um, so finishing this calculation gives you how many number of seconds are in a billion year. So. Uh, it's, and the algebra that you go through here is that minutes cancel, hours cancel, days cancel, um, year, oh, yeah, yeah, so I guess it's, uh, well, so what you end up with, or I guess to finish up here, I really should have the number of uh, 10 to the 9 uh, billion, not, not billion, 10 to the 9, years per billion year, because that's a billion. <laughs> um, so years would cancel. So what you have is a number of seconds per billion year. So, uh, so let me do that on a separate calculator so that I don't wipe out the other number I have. So let me just put all that number in 60 times 60 times 24 times 36, 365.2425. By the way, if you just use the 365, you'll still be fine. The question has enough tolerance for that. And then a billion, uh, 10 to the power of um, nine equals, uh, that's how many seconds are in a billion year. Let me express that in scientific unit, uh, scientific notation, 3.16 times 10 to the power of 16. So, so I can take the number that's in the other calculator, then number there, that's the number of seconds. 
And when I divide it by the number of seconds in a billion year, 3.16 times 10 to the power of 16, that'll give me the number of billion years. And the number of billion years, oh wait, I can just type it in. Number of billion years is 7.98. Uh, oh, yeah, that's just billion. So 7.98 billion years. So this is in one sense, the basis of the numbers we cite, you know, that our sun will have another 4 billion years because this is the rough calculation of how much energy sun has uh, before it starts running out of hydrogen and enter a uh, red giant stage where it'll uh, go through the stage more quickly. So, so we have about 4 billion years left in, or maybe three and a half billion years left on the, the sun's main sequence stage, which hopefully will remain mostly stable for most of the time. Uh, so yeah, this is a calculation exercise. <laughs> mm.